Hello and welcome to What's a Preacher to Do, sponsored by the Perkins Center for Preaching Excellence. I'm Wes Allen, the Lois Craddock Perkins Professor of Homiletics at Perkins School of Theology, Southern Methodist University. Now, in this series of short interviews, we're asking scholars of diverse disciplines to help preachers bring a range of critical tools to bear on offering God's good news to individuals and communities who are struggling with a variety of issues and concerns related to the coronavirus crisis we're in right now. Today we have with us Dr. Maria Dixon Hall. She teaches communication in the Meadow School of the Arts at SMU and is the senior advisor to the president for Campus Cultural Intelligent Initiative. She's also an ordained deacon in the United Methodist Church. So Maria, welcome. My question for you is what is a key insight from your areas of expertise that you'd like to share because you think it would be helpful to preachers as they prepare sermons during these difficult times? Well, Wes, thank you so much for, for allowing me to be here. Um, and I'm going to bring a little bit of expertise, not just as a, a communication professor, but as the wife of an elder who's having to perform these things every week. And so this is a new reality for him as well. Um, the first thing I would tell anybody out there is to ask yourself, who are you preaching to every Sunday? Um, because as you are Zooming, as you are live streaming, when you're writing your sermon, what are the needs of that particular audience? Every audience has a need. It's either the need to be informed, it's the need to be persuaded, or it has the need to be encouraged. What is it your audience, your congregation needs from you? And I think as I watched sermons the very first two weeks of Zooming, what I saw was uh, some people having the tendency to just continue to preach as if nothing has changed. Mm. And that's a problem because people are coming to the church, they're coming to their pastor, they're looking for a word of hope. They're looking for a bomb in Gilead. And so recognizing that these are extenuating circumstances and that our words, our sermons must meet not just the liturgical season, it has to meet the emotional season of our audience. The second thing I would say is, are you just preaching to your congregation? Recognize that um, when you are doing your Zooming or your live streaming, that if you're preaching just to your congregation, then it's going to have a different feel than if you are preaching to share the gospel. And, and yes, I know we're always trying to do that, but are you trying to create new disciples? There's a different way to preach in this time when you are preaching an evangelistic sermon, a sermon to draw people to Jesus Christ who may have never known Christ or thought about Christ. So you have to understand that as well. And so those are the two things, is understanding the, the needs of your audience, and the goal you have uh, in your sermon. What is the goal? Um, and, and I'd finally say, um, understand that the liturgical calendar doesn't always bend to this kind of season. Um, and that I say this sort of quietly so that my husband doesn't hear me, but it's okay not to preach the liturgy. Uh, the, <laughs> I, I know, not to preach the liturgical calendar because the people of God will have different needs and keep those needs in mind. Thank you very much. Let me, so let me follow up with your last point about the liturgical calendar and, and press back a little bit and ask, especially as we're now um, heading into Holy Week and Easter as you and I are recording this, um, this is a key time for the liturgical calendar, but I also think the focus on death and resurrection is not inappropriate to what we are facing uh, in our health crisis right now. And I suspect um, that along with psychological needs are, are at the top of the need for sermons for encouragement. I just wondered if you might want to say something about that connection. Well, I think this is really important as I just touched my face, so who knows what's going to happen to me now. Um, you know, it's last week, the liturgical calendar had my absolute favorite scripture 
which was the raising of Lazarus. And if you're a student of Gail O'Day, which I was, anything from the book of John is always going to excite me. But what a wonderful time to dig into the ugliness and the despair of death uh, and couple it with the joy of resurrection. Here again, as we move into Palm Sunday and we begin this week, we are living in a time where we feel buried, where we feel shut off. We, I mean, so the images that this, this series of texts will give us will be more relevant probably than they've ever been, of being shut away, of being cut off from life, of not being able, for those who have underlying conditions, not being able to, to feel the sunshine on your face. Mm -hmm. And so there is, a, there is a wonderful way of weaving that's going to happen this upcoming week if we are willing to preach toward the emotional as well as the liturgical, that that's great. Easter Thank is you. something that Thank we you. That, need That's to wonderful. Get I, um, I, I want to be um, careful with your time. I know what, how busy you are, but um, we not only share that we are both students of Gail O'Day um, uh, from our days back in Emory, but we also both have these Alabama roots that you are, are showing so well. And I just wonder if you want to offer a Roll Tide as we head out. Oh, well, you know, Roll Tide means everything. So let me say in this high holy week to all of my fellow friends, Roll Tide Roll. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you too, Wes. Take care now. Bye-bye.